Hello guys, welcome back to TSBEC TV and welcome to LRO 2019. I'm here with Mr. Land Rover photo album himself. And the whole point of this chat basically, or well, the whole reason I'm joining you for this is because you've actually seen the new Defender. I have. And uh, that's how I'm going to start this. And uh, I know you're obviously very positive about it already. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it, like the new Defender has caused massive amounts of controversy in Land Rover circles. Um, it seems to be very love it or hate it at the moment. And you've just done as well a two hour documentary basically on why the new Defender is the way forward and why people should move on, and so on and so forth. Uh, but not in like a sort of shouty, this is, you know, my opinion is the right opinion kind of way, more of in a like, you know, well reasoned argument. Um, and I watched it last night and it was fantastic. Oh, I've got the seen it, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did my homework, uh, watched it last night. Um, See, so yeah, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on the new Defender and then we can just start a chat basically. Right, well, because you... you've seen it in the flesh. You saw it back in July? Uh, yeah, July 9th, I think. Yeah, um, Jesus, that's crazy. It's, it's no different to, let's say, the 2015 Defender is to Series 1. You know, it's still a Defender. Same stuff, different era. Yeah. You know what I mean? For, as in, the task it has to do are more for today rather than yesteryear. And yesteryear, Tasks were very different. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm talking about different conflicts. Even the style of war is different. It's more cyber now and media mm -hmm. and drone versus. And you've got IEDs and you've got all this, basically all these other things, but you've got also different le legislation. Um, people use them for very different things. In 1948 or even 2000, um, but it's 2000, the level of thinking was very different. I mean, smoking was allowed in restaurants yeah. back then. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of. There's lots of Anything that doesn't evolve in this world um, seeks, to exi uh, seeks to exist. You know, it becomes extinct, gone forever. Yeah. Uh, it was either that or let the defender name die. Yeah. What would you say to the people that argued that Land Rover should have built, say, something like the new Jimny, or just you know, sort of taken the original Defender and sort of uh, you know facelifted it and made it newer? Uh, and, and to the people that that say that the new Defender is overly complicated, it's just a disco, all of this kind of stuff, you know, why is, why is the new Defender in the, in the form that it is in, why is that the right vehicle? Well, right is, might be subjective, I mean, it's going to be right for a majority but, audience. But why, why that over something that it, something, let's, let's take the Suzuki Jimny, that's, everyone's comparing it to the Jimny, you know, why, why didn't Land Rover go with that and just make something simple, not revolutionary or evolutionary. Well, sorry, they did that already, didn't they? They did make, oh. They did make something right. simple. They did the 2015 Defender, yeah. and for the last five years of Defender production, after reinventing it, as in reinventing it, Ford Transit engine and not much else. Yeah, and you dash. Yeah, they sold less than 5,000 units, in yeah. that, and a lot of that would have been to do with the because yeah. the, the, they said they were finishing production, so they made the Adventurer and Heritage. Yeah, that kicked up the numbers a bit. Yeah, so yeah, you can did. see that was in Europe though those numbers. And that's the majority buying audience, and yeah. there's no no one's buying it. People th people are upset about something that no one was buying. I think that's a, that's a really good point to make when you talk about the new Defender. Is there's another argument that people often go with is they could have just carried on making the old one. There was nothing wrong with it. Don't fix it if it ain't broken. And that was something you picked up on in your film. But the thing is, like the the sales numbers for the last few years of production were it just wasn't worth it for Land Rover to keep on making it. Um, but it wasn't most effective, was it? That's no, the other thing. It, the it production cost, it cost was way more and took way longer to build. And environmental impact just producing it, not yeah. the driving yeah. of it as well. The, yeah. It was there was no real money in it, it was built at a loss. Um, and the sales figures proved that no one really wanted it. Everyone really loved yeah. it. Yeah. No one wanted it. But, and I, I should stress actually that both of us are huge Land Rover fanatics, like Big time. through and through, and, yeah. and you know we love everything from the Series One up until uh, the latest stuff. So we love, you know, for example, what we're sitting in. We love the original Defender. I have an original Defender. You have a Disco Three. Uh, we love all that stuff, um, but we appreciate that it is time to move forward. And the old Defender isn't going anywhere. Um, and and another point to carry on what we were just talking about that you made is that if you have a 2007 Defender, there is no point in going to the dealer and saying, oh, I'd like a 2015 Defender nope. to upgrade it because they're the same thing, yeah, basically. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you I, get, I know you people get that pick newer, on that, but they are. You, you yeah. could get, you know, oh yeah, it's a bit newer, maybe lower mileage, whatever. And, you know, they went from 2.4 to 2.2. Maybe it was a tiny bit more refined. 
tiny, but in the grand scheme of things, it's it's the same thing. It's almost like a communist thing. <laughs> if you it's, well, if you think about it this way, if everything is the same and there's no progression, you don't create any competition, you don't get any innovation. And since it's the same, there's no innovation, no real. What is the point of going to the next one? Especially if it's so easy yeah. to maintain yeah. and yeah, keep yeah. going, then there's no real reason to go out and get another one. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that the you know why Land Rover didn't just make a Jimny kind of thing is that it would just be the same vehicle. You know, maybe it would, maybe they'd put airbags in it or something, or uh, it would be a bit harder to steal. But it, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't sell. I don't. I don't think it would because people would just. It'd be the same thing, and people who have the original Defender would keep that. And when the Puma arrived, people who got used to the TD5 were upset with the Puma. And when the TD5 arrived, people with the 300 TDI were upset with it. Yeah. Yeah. Land Rover are in a catch-22 position. They're damned if they do and damned if they don't. But they're really damned if they didn't do anything. Really, really damned. You know, they could have just lost that name, the brand name, would have the Defender name would have been. Just forgot. Well, yeah. I mean, who? We know about the Mustang, don't we? Mm -hmm. And they still make that. Yeah. Um, but how many people chant the name Model T? Yeah. Did I make that? I think. I mean, you can think about speaking of American cars. You can think about the number of Ameri GM American brands that don't exist anymore, and how how many people remember those. Yeah. And if <laughs> the name is kept alive because they carried on making them. Yeah. Like, so you got the Camaro, the Charger, the yeah. Mustang, yeah. Corvette. I don't think if they stopped production in the 70s, 60s, of course people would know like the E-Type, but they wouldn't know it like they know it now. It's the new ones carrying that legacy. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. Um, yeah. but also passion. I mean, I'd hand over my D3 like that. If someone said it's a Suffolk A Range Rover or a 1984 110, I'd love it, especially with the county decals. Mm. But that's not going to happen, and I can't afford them. So, yeah. and yeah. with my gear, I've got to have a D3 anyway to lock it up and the yeah. reliability. Yeah. If I had the money, I'd definitely have both. Yeah, it's. I know people point fingers and go, "Well, you, you don't really know what you're talking about," but I mean, I really do, and I really, really love the old a lot. I would. I mean, which kidney do likewise, I sell? Likewise, I would have one of every you know model of Land Rover if I could, yeah. um, including the new stuff. Uh, and and you, you mentioned that it's a Catch 22 for Land Rover, uh, and that is something again you mentioned in your film, um, which. By the way, you should absolutely go and watch, and I'll put a link down to it in the description below because it doesn't have nearly enough views. Uh, so go and check it out. It's two hours long, but it's worth watching, regardless of whether you are for or against the new Defender. Um, but anyway, Catch-22, That another argument is that it's a great vehicle, the new Defender, but they shouldn't have called it the Defender because it's not you know, the right thing. But then you said, if, everyone, if, you know, if they called it something else, and then everyone loved it, they'd be like, oh, well, they should have called it the new Defender because it carries on the, the heritage. But then Land Rover goes, well, it's too late now. Yeah. They're screwed. Again, that's... So. Yeah, and if they didn't call it Defender, and it turns out to be really good, your Defenders that you have now would be worth a little bit less, maybe. There's a risk of that. Yeah. Because if this is a, becomes a modern, yeah. modern woo-woo vehicle, yeah. everybody goes, well, let's get the old one too. You know, and the values go it's up. It's the same with, like, Mini Beetle yeah. way. Yeah, I mean... It's because if I think again, it's the same thing that if if Fiat hadn't reinvented the Fiat 500 or if if uh, Mini hadn't reinvented the Mini, they wouldn't be the same. Yeah, I mean everybody really wants an original Mini, an original Fiat 500, yeah. and yet if you go back 15 years ago, the Fiat 500 you could pick one up for 250 pounds. You know, they weren't no one really wanted yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. They were sort of iconic, but they were really iconic when they reintroduced it. So it's it's tricky. It's a uh, it's a minefield to reinvent. Of such an icon as well for Land Rover. Yeah. So obviously they were scratching their heads for a long time. I don't. People think it was just an overnight whim. And if yeah. you look at even though if you go to I didn't put it in. I was going to, but it was four hours the initial cut. Four uh, yeah, hours. And I cut it. And you can show the. If you go to the Dunsmore collection, you'll see a monocoque air sprung 1996 Defender prototype. And they've been working on iterations for a long time. You know, and they're standing on the shoulders of say P38 and Disco yeah, 2, yeah. L32, all these. Uh, baby steps of yeah. tech that are now matured and people are still scared about and the people who aren't scared about that type of tech the people who own it because they know it works yeah um, and again going off tech you also mentioned that the defender you you were using in the film it was a 2007 puma yeah um, and that obviously has is is a lot more electronic let's say than say a, a 200 or 300 TDI or yeah. something and in the same way that everyone says, you know, if a new Land Rover, you take it out in the middle of nowhere and the electrics are going to screw you over in the middle of nowhere and you can't fix it. 
you know, the same thing happens with an old Defender. I have a 1999 TD5. If the ECU dies in that, I'm just as screwed as I am in a new Land Rover yeah. if the electrics go down. That's it. And in this day and age, most people have got some recovery service. Most people live we, in their we don't live. We don't live in a world. It's not like the in the you know the 50s with the what was it, the Cambridge to yeah the Cambridge and Oxford expeditions. Yeah. You know they were travelling through completely uninhabited places with no paved roads and everything because it was a different world back then. And we live in a world now where you can travel all over the world and, and stop in a, in a hotel or... Yeah. And here's the other thing, if your TD5 still works with the ECUs and BCUs on that and uh, 300 TDIs and whatnot, well the new ones are going to work. Because the new yeah. ones, they're, they're more evolved, the ECUs yeah. and BCUs, yeah. they're going to be more dustproof and more waterproof and they do cover a lot more miles a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, I know we heard the horror stories but... You know, uh, good news crosses the line very much last. Yeah. Bad news gets <laughs> very, there well before. Very much so. Very much so. Um, and you know, people, you mentioned something like the, you know, the people who have those the most negative opinions are generally shouting the loudest. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, I understand though. They're really passionate, and it's also, I mean, it's not fair for me to criticise because so I'm not going to. But mm. if no one's seen the actual thing yet, then they can't really have a fair assessment. Yeah. So that's not a criticism. Yeah. This is actually a fact. Until people have actually seen it in the flesh and at least had to go or seen it in action, then really it's all speculation. Yeah. And I get the speculation because when you really love something, it's very hard to turn your back on it. Yeah, absolutely. Or at least acknowledge something else absolutely. exists that could yeah. be better. Yeah. Especially when you put all those, well, a lot of money and lots of hours into it, and you've had so many good times with it, and then something else comes along with the same name, and you go, Yeah. You know. But but two things on that point. Firstly, the the the, the old defender isn't going anywhere. You know, the day the, the new Defender hits the roads, um, you can still drive around in your old Defender, uh, and like you said, it might even be worth a bit more. Um, but it's, it's likely it's, it'll be worth a bit it's, more. It's yeah. not going to go anywhere. Uh, it'll just become even more special in some ways. Yeah. Um, and, and secondly, Land Rover didn't design the new Defender, you know, to, to spite the enthusiasts. No. They built it to, to pay homage to the to the original, but to move forward at the same time. And, and Jerry McGovern had that amazing line um, that it was, what was it, uh, that he said in it's the- It's respectful the, of the past. Yeah, respectful, it's, it's respectful of the past, but not harnessing it. Yeah. So it's taking the best bits of the Defender, what it stood for, along with some visual cues, but taking all of that and moving forward with it. Yeah. Not sitting back and saying, oh, the, the old Defender is what we love, so you know, let's just stay with that and just tweak it a bit. Yeah, I mean, the fandom as well is largely another reason why it exists. I mean, if there's no fandom and the old ones kept alive, the average Joe who might want one is thinking about one, wouldn't really want one because they wouldn't have seen any on the road, they'd be yeah. all gone. Yeah. And so it's because of that fandom that's really ignited it. Uh, and you can't blame Land Rover for cashing in on that. I mean, it's no. who wouldn't? They are a business, they're not. Yeah. They're nostalgia tool, you know. I know they're pandering to a bit of nostalgia. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. a business has to make money. That's yeah. the way businesses work, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's such a good vehicle. Isn't it? I have no doubt about that. I'm not and trying to. Not not trying to. It's easy for me to say. I'm. I've seen it, but um, and I know other people have seen it at motor shows. But I'm pretty sure most of them were pretty impressed too. Yeah, yeah. I think most people are. And uh, and in the, in the same way that when the Disco Three came out, the Disco Four came out, and whatever else after it, and and people you know, said it's too posh, it's too expensive, it's too this and that. Uh, 10, 15 years later, you walk around a show like LRO and they are all over the place and you go on forums, on Facebook groups, uh, and people are just praising them as the best value for money Land Rover because it's, you know, does everything a Defender does in more comfort. Yeah. Uh, and, and people just like them now because they can afford them. That is, uh, and, and they've and, had time to get used to it. Yeah, and, and, and you know, yeah, exactly. And when, in 10 years time, you'll come to a place like this, uh, and they'll, it'll be the same thing but with a new Defender. People will be able to get them for a quarter of the price or a third of the price or whatever. Um, and they'll realise actually how damn good they are because they'll do everything that their old Defender does. Um, but, but with a bit more and you know people keep these old series now. People will have a Defender in a series and the series will be the thing they polish up and keep nice and take, to, take out in the summer or it has a soft top or they take it to shows and the Defender is the, the newer thing. And then it will be the other way around soon and the Defenders will, people will start looking after those. Absolutely. And the new Defender will be the, the next Disco 3 or whatever that people love as the, the best value for money. 
Well, that's it. Yeah, and nostalgia. You got you got children today who are out in the say a disco five, and that'll be their sort of pinpoint, their nucleus for nostalgia. Mm. Yeah. Thirty yeah, years yeah, from yeah. now, yeah. you know exactly. Yes. That, that's me with the Defenders and Disco Twos when yeah. I was growing up. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I've got what, what was mine. I think two ways and series ones were uh, what we had because they were second hand and affordable ish. Yeah. Yeah. Ish. And uh, I, I hark back to that and early Range Rovers and his. Nostalgia is a powerful weapon, and let them know this. They they, uh, they, yeah, they, they have latched onto it a bit, and you can't blame them. It's their IP, they own it. And, they yeah, can, yeah. and I don't think they've done it a disservice. No. There's a, there's a lot to say for the new one. I think when we get more reviews, hands on reviews, because a lot of it's been walk arounds at the moment. Yeah, no one's uh, driven it yet. No. No, not yet. But uh, I've heard some good stuff by the people who test drive it, mm. and none of it's negative. I mean, it's obviously going to be good. Yeah. As in, if you put subjectivity aside and just do it objectively, it's going to be better than the previous version. Yeah. For the majority yeah. of things, it might. It wouldn't make sense it if it wasn't. Like that. The only thing it can't do well is be old. Yeah. Because it's new. It, it can't know. be old. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing it can't do well. It might not be able to scream that character because it's too new. It hasn't deserved the wings yeah. and things. You know, it's a it's a tricky. It's a minefield, really. I mean, yeah. us saying it's yeah. good. Or likely to be good is a bit of a minefield too because we don't actually know for sure. Yeah. But logic dictates. But yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and uh, something else I wanted to ask was the other the big argument that comes up is like, yeah, it looks great, I love the way it looks, it's gonna be very capable, but it's too expensive, Land Rover have gone the wrong way with the pricing. Mm -hmm. Um so what what's your argument on, on pricing and, and why do you think it's it's the right uh, price range? Um, and also you, I would love to hear you hear your argument about what you said about the series one. Um, yeah, I mean to the people watching because I think that's it's a quite a good point. I think the series one in 1948 was 460 pounds, I think. They're about give or take a pound, and the average annual income was 204 pounds. <laughs> and today, so less than half of yeah. Today is 29,600 pounds in the UK, the average annual wage. And the vehicle starts at thirty-five thousand pounds, so it's yeah. a better value vehicle. Yeah, for a commercial version. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I know there's, you've got to have some variables there too, because we've got markets are different, economies are different, and it could change any minute. But it's still better value, even yeah. if you go for a worst case scenario. Yeah. yeah. I saw a similar argument online somewhere, um, where someone said something like, like that, but with the Defender that in the '90s, whenever it was, or early 2000s, that. It, you know, a brand new Defender was like twenty-five thousand pounds or something. Yeah. Um, and and if you put that in today's money, it's like forty, forty-five thousand pounds or something. Uh, and people just forget that money changes uh, in that way. The XS one ten um, towards the end of the run, I think that was something like thirty-three or thirty-four thousand. Yeah. That's. Yeah. We're talking about a very basic vehicle. Yeah. Even the top spec Defender was very basic. And whilst people think it's cheaper for them now to knock them out, so why does it cost so much? Because it costs a fortune to develop it. They have to pay so much money out. It's, it's, the yeah. making of it is one thing, but the development, that's a lot of people and a lot of heads banging yeah. together and a lot of for, tests. For a long time. Yeah. For like, I know they say it took them six years to it's, make this big but it's a lot longer. It's like 30 years. They've been working on technology. Collectively, yeah. Yeah, collectively. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they made a monocoque um, 90, 1996 with their suspension, so that means yeah, it's in the Dunstall collection. Oh, is this the one you, I think you posted the picture of? It's black, isn't it? Yeah, black. Yeah, yeah. And it's, a, it's a slightly weird looking one, but it's, it's Yeah, it's, sort of, it's like a Defender that's been smoothed out. Isn't yeah. it? It's not as... I can't remember the, the, the code name for it, but it was... It's just a working, wasn't a prototype for a Defender as such, but it clearly is one. And they're just testing out technology. That's, they smashed a few of them up to see how it worked, and that's what they're for, you know. And uh, technically, ever since they were working on the classic Range Rover with their suspension, it's been building from there on. And they have tried all sorts of DC 100 people think it's the same thing, it's not. That, was, that was a, wasn't a prototype, that was a concept. Concept and prototype very different things. Yeah. Prototype is something that's going to go into production. Yeah, yeah. A concept is just like, well, look what An we idea. might. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. So I mean, and there were some good bits on that. People, I know it was an idiot reaction. It was quite radical, but there's some. You can see there's some good bits on it. Yeah, yeah. That that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was 100. 2010 or 11. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a whole generation ago. Vehicle generation. They do what? They change them every six years or something. Go on to at least a facelift and it comes out. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. There's disco fires behind us, two of them at the shows. I mean, 
they're catching on quickly. Even yeah, the they are. Yeah. They're already a lot more this year than they were last year. Yeah. So. People also think that oh, the Disco 5 isn't selling. They actually sell more Disco 5s than they sell Disco 4s in the same year on year. Yeah. Uh, I know they were a radical change and not everybody's liking it. Um, yeah. But I think people That's what, don't deny the technology that, that's in them. The they're actually very effective. Yeah. We I've spent quite a lot of time uh, I spent some time at Eastern or driving a Disco 5 off-road on their tracks and it's the most incredible experience yeah, and how handy. capable it is. Yeah. And it's not incredible. just about, the, it's the traction you can get with those tyres, they're yeah, not off-road exactly. tyres. With those tyres and, and without you know much assistance from the driver, it, it's all doing it itself basically. Yeah. And it's not a small vehicle, it's a large vehicle. No, it's big. So it's able to do all that with road tyres on and being yeah. so massive. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's clever. Yeah. And obviously, the defender's going to be better than that. That's what I'm told. But it's going to be the most capable out of all the. But it, it has to be for Landra. It's got to. It, be. it is the you know the new flagship vehicle. It has to be. But it's got to the, outgun the G wagon and the stock, the stock G wagon and a stock Wrangler. Yeah. That's its target. And obviously um, Land Cruiser. But I think Land Cruiser is more up against Disco than you know. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. But um, although. Um, Defender is meant to be an overland vehicle as well, but they have been using Disco 5s. You know, yeah, overlands. and I've even seen Range Rovers, they did the Silk, was it Silk Road? Silk Road, yeah. Road? I mean, that was that was not a normal average person having a crack at it. You can do it in all sorts, really. I mean, yeah. Pollyanna, you saw, you've heard of Pollyanna, that series one, the woman did 140,000 yeah, miles. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's brilliant, yeah. yeah and, that's, and that was something that coils used to burn out every other second. And, <laughs> you know, you'd have, to, you'd have to have the head reboard every half a mile, and it did 50 <laughs> petrol stations to the mile. It's all that, and she managed to do that in a very early series one yeah so you know you can do it you can probably do it in a Renault 4 you can probably do it in all sorts of things well they did do it in Renault 4s and yeah. Renault 405s yeah. and yeah. 404 sorry Peugeot 404 sorry and it's I understand though the passion what I love about all this is the passion that people are up in arms right or wrong rightly or wrongly because they love it so much the original and I think that's brilliant yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that at all I think it's hard for Land Rover, those are hard curve for them yeah, to get around. But, but those people that are so madly in love with it shouldn't be afraid of what's coming next at no. all. Yeah. I mean, they're not scared of the next smartphone. If they really like their iPhone 7... No, and it, exactly. It's, it's quite an amusing analogy in a way. It doesn't work completely. But you don't keep your Nokia 3310 or whatever, you know, over an iPhone because the iPhone just does everything better and obviously there's differences you know a car you keep because it's classic and everything like that but you have to evolve you can keep the old stuff yeah. but, but you've got to move it? on as well yeah well, that's it I mean and um, I think fans what I love about them is that um, so passionate about it that well, I've already said this really you know, it's, um, rightly or wrongly They'll fight to almost the bitter end until it's taken time and bled into the, the psyche and it's around the roads all the time yeah, and then they've yeah. slowly got used to it yeah. and experienced it and then yeah. it's not so much of a shock. But it's because they're protective of what they really love. Because yeah. it is like having a child to a degree. A car's a very personal thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, can, I can vouch for that for yeah. sure. Um, it's not like a stereo or a VHS or even No, no, you just throw it out when the new one comes out. Yeah, but yeah. a car is... I mean, I, I don't see my Defender as a car, to be quite honest. It, it's a companion. It is. Uh, that's, that's what it is, and I've experienced so much with it that I never want to part with it. Um, but anyway, we've spoken for ages now about the sort of, you know, the argument of, of the new Defender. Um, and before we finish, you've seen the new Defender, mm -hmm. and at the end of your, uh, spoilers, but at the end of your uh, documentary, you show it for about three seconds. Oh, with me, ends. with it? Yes, yeah. and it ends. Yep. So, can if you're allowed to, or you're, if, I don't know if you want to save it for your channel, um, talk us through like that whole experience of, of you going to see it, the the moment you saw it for the first time, what was it like, you know, what was it, what did it smell like, what did it feel like, what did it sound, etc. Everything, because you've seen it, and, and not many people have. Well, first, um, firstly, I was invited to Gaiden, you know, Lanaro's Skunk Works, and this is a new building as well. Not many people go in there. And uh, I have to have my phone in a bag, so you can't, so you can't see, that the lenses can't peep through. Mm -hmm. So you can still use your phone, you just can't use it as a camera. And you need to fill in all these forms saying you'll be shot hand drawn and quartered if you even flinch the wrong way, and then you <laughs> quite like that. But when you go in there, and then you hang in with all these people and you go, hello, and they go, all right, and they're treating you like one of them, yeah. and then you find out they're producers of Top Gear and uh, Force <laughs> Magazine, I went, oh, no. And you've got to go, I wanted to go and talk to camera, and you can't use your own camera, you have to use it. They have their camera yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they can keep the footage nice and safe for when the embargo is due anyway. 
And so you've got these professional cameramen who are used to working with people like, I don't know, Clarkson. Yeah. And, you know, professional people. And then you've got me, who's just a fan. That's all I am. Just a fan who's all giddy. And I see this, and I've got all these people from Auto Express and Top Gear. And, but all there, and I'm just this fan. A little... No one. <laughs> and, and I'm having... And I went last to say things to camera. And I just seen it and I've gone round it all and I'm like ooh and I was speaking to the engineers and Nick Rogers and ooh and I was so full of beans I couldn't get it out and I, I was like a rabbit in headlights I was just it's a camera and I, I, was, I felt so embarrassed but not because I was just pleased that I was there you know it was kind of a bit of a golden opportunity yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah I totally get that yeah but I was blown away by uh, there's lots of little details it's quite hard to say right now off the top of my head because there's so many of them the interior is really notable and it's very sturdy and it's there's nothing really they haven't already said in on those little previews. Yeah. Me though, I was talking about cigarettes rolling down the side of it and things because that's why I used to, when I used to smoke and they turn around, you know, like on a series two and you've got the small shelf bit, and they always just go right behind your steering wheel and stuff. But that's what I was saying to camera. Oh, I'm not kidding. And, and I was, you know, and I used five to, minutes ago you were talking I, about how modern and, and yeah, everything it is. I know. That's, and I was saying I used to fight my brother in the back of that part there, but they've updated it now. <laughs> you know, it was all, I didn't do it normally because I'm not that normal and I'm just a big goofy geeky fan. Oh, some um, people like that, but... Yeah, I know, um, <laughs> but I saw everybody else's now. They've all put theirs up from... I think mine was done beforehand, actually, than the ones in the woods with Richard Hammond. And, and I've looked at that and I thought, um, I'm not very good at this. The vehicle itself, I sat in the seats and sat in the and I lay in the back of the 110, and I had this suit on and no one else did that. But I needed to know if I could sleep in it. You've got to stretch out, you know? And I could, and I went, phew. Because I was testing all these things that other people don't test. Like yeah, you were going. testing it like, you know, you were going to buy it and use it every day kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, you know, can I sleep in it? Yeah. Where would my cameras go? Yeah. You know, and you know, if I put my phone there, would it slide down the back of the chair? Things like that. It was pointless. I'm not really good. I'm not a reviewer at all. But did it meet all those criteria of yours? It bloody well did. That was the thing. It, it felt very sturdy. It felt utilitarian, but modern. And yeah, it had all the tech there, but it's all hidden. The tech is like, there's not many buttons. And what buttons are there? Are big, so you can turn them with big gloves on and things. Yeah, yeah. And even if you drop something on the floor, you find it straight away because there's no like little holes and gaps. Yeah, so no yeah. bits of carpet that are going to fall over. It just, I don't know, it's all it's simple but not. And, and what spec was the one you saw in? Oh, I it? saw the X and uh, okay. the, the, so the uh, very, very top spec. Yeah, and, and the first edition. First edition. That okay. was a 19 in the 110. 19 in the 110, right. So, uh, and I saw a concept one, which I'm not supposed to talk about, but you can, if it's too late, I'll teach you if you let me. Um, it was a, it was like made of plastic, not real, mm. but it had real wheels on it, and you could see where they were going with it. That was, I think that was an adventure. Oh, so it was like a different look, or? No, no, it was the same, but you couldn't really do much. There's no real doors. They, you, they uh, look like, and you go like that, and it's all like a mold. It's yeah. one of their, um, what would it look like in real life after they, you know, and they carve it all out. Yeah, and I was looking at that, and it was—I um, think it was the adventurer or the explorer, or whatever they called it. It was the one with all the panniers, and but it was a fake one. Yeah, and that was just there. Sort of, I don't know why they had that out actually, but it, it looked the part. You can see where they were going with the ball. I mean, it's really impressive. In person, it's, there's a lot of awe going on with it. It's a bit more. There's more majesticness going on. Yeah, and in, up front, those dimensions and angles and everything in person look more defender than they do in the picture. Very much, actually. Mm. Yeah, that, that's something I will say, actually, is I haven't seen it, but from my time filming and taking pictures of cars, pictures and videos don't usually do them justice. No, that's You've got to see them in flesh, in the flesh to see the, the angles, the shapes, and, and, and everything. Yeah. Um, to really appreciate it. If I had a 110 now or this, if you look at the front and the bumper goes on it, all of a sudden you're losing that uh, approach angle because the winch sticks out more. Yeah. <laughs> but with that, it seems to be with the shoulder from the winch, it looked like it was flush. Yeah, it's all built into yeah. it. So, that means you, you're not losing approach angle when you've got a winch on it, which is valuable. You don't want your winch digging into things when you're trying to climb up them. Yeah. So there is yeah. that. Um, they thought of a lot, actually, and obviously the tow bar gets hidden out of the way, so that doesn't caught on everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it has been... They've know, agonized, though. Like I said, Land Rover has designed this to be, you know, have all the best bits of the original Defender for the 21st century. They haven't just made something to you know, to drive around Knightsbridge. No. I mean, you, know, you can drive around You can drive around Knightsbridge, yeah. and people will. Yeah, of you know, yeah. people will. They've got to get but, that urban one and have the biggest yeah, they'll, they'll have the, the X with all the, the biggest rims and whatever. Well, Land Rover are thinking, though, since Twisted making these things, well, they'll make one too, then. Why yeah, not they, they know what they're doing, basically. You know, they're not stupid. Yeah. Um, but it has to still, like watches, you know, like trendy watches that, uh, you know, they can go down to 3,000 metres. They still have to do that. 
Yeah. That's the thing. It doesn't matter how trendy yeah, no it one, is. No one is taking one of those yeah. watches diving. But no, but they still have to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, um, they can't advertise something that's not real. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But that, the, you can see by the dimensions that it actually can do all that. Yeah. And if they've yeah. got that, tr if they've got the trickery from the Disco Five, but a new advanced version of it, yeah. in something with those dimensions, it's got to be really good. Yeah. You know, with those specs and that weight, and it, it, logic dictates it should be brilliant. I mean, if it isn't that good, you know, I'll say, I'll, I'll say, I've got, I've got integrity. If it turns out not to be that good and a bit more, then I probably will. Yeah, I'll say. The chances of that are really so slim. minute. Yeah, really slim. Um, um, there's also what I'll say this. I've been asked this lots of times. Isn't there anything I don't like about it? Um, it's not I don't like, it's a preference. I like a split tailgate, because mm -hmm. I do filmy stuff. A split tailgate isn't defender, is it? No, it's not. I don't know if Series 1 did have a tailgate. Okay, Didn't yeah, okay, tour, fair, I mean, yeah. I say that, it's ironic, because we're sitting in a yeah, split tailgate yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, a, in a Series 3. But now it was a so, disco. Huh? Now it was a disco, it evolved. Yeah, true. But I would see... True. But I think yeah. people would... No, I don't know. Well, that's it, you see. It could be an option. Well, it won't be because of the overhang. Yeah. Because if you if you have a split tailgate, then you've got to put the wheel underneath. And since there's no overhang, the, the, yeah. then you can't. Yeah. So that's it. Being a true off-road, then, which it is, that's how you know it's a true one. Yeah. True off-roader because the wheel's on the back door. And real off-roaders, that's where they live. Yeah. There's nowhere else to put them otherwise, unless you put it in the back and take up all the room. So there, there is that. So that's a hint to it being formidable. Uh, but I, I'm... I can live with it, yeah. Because it's just it. I mean, it also looks iconic. Yeah, it does. It's still got the, the silhouette for me. It has. It has. I know the windscreen's a bit more that way, but there's a lot of reasons for that. There's drag coefficient. Yeah. Uh, it's also they've got their crumple zones. They've got those airbags that have to go to a certain angle. There's yeah, lots yeah. of reasons why. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure every angle, every nut and bolt, every anything has been agonised over. They didn't just go. Ooh, what, what should we have there? Oh, let's put that there. Yeah, All right, yeah. then, you know, they, they had to over and over and over. And I bet yeah, there's yeah. loads of times where they've gone, we can't now. After five crash tests, we've realized yeah, this can't go there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's taken so long. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and they're, they're still testing it this, this very minute, aren't they? They've got prototypes yeah. up still now because they're constantly updating BIOS, even if the hardware's sorted. Yeah. They're doing like um, electronic updates. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which I like that, the hive mind thing they've got going where uh, yeah. the, there's a battery in it and it will stay on the internet for two weeks itself and it will update while it's off and it won't use your car battery it uses its own and that means when you hop in it it's already on the internet it's already on a 5g connection if you've got 5g oh, that's good. Cool. yeah so it's constantly and if one's been updated or one knows there's a bump somewhere then they all know yeah it's all it's all clever it's all yeah, yeah. it's all very futuristic i won't pretend to know lots about it i just know that it must be good yeah because it says so yeah um anyway i need to sort of wrap this up now yeah um two things can you sum it up the experience and yeah, what your thoughts are about it. Not that I mean, we already kind of get the idea. But and then the other question is, are you going to buy one? Yeah, <laughs> well, if I had the money, I would definitely. Um, the experience of doing all that was like Christmas. Yeah, yeah like yeah. being very young, you know, fairly immature person. But when it comes to Land Rovers, it's, I'm always excited. And when a new one comes out, especially when it's an, an icon, then it turns out to be because I had my doubts. Everybody had it. I, I knew that it would be good, but yeah, you might have doubts about certain yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. And when they um, went to see it, and I thought, oh, oh right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was the same, you know, when I saw some of the prototypes, I was like, that looks a bit funny, you know? It's, or when some of the leaks came out, I was just like, uh, are they going in the right direction? And then I watched the reveal event live, and I was like, oh my God, this is, this is like amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of safety as well. I've had a lot of accidents in my time, and I've been run over and uh, all sorts of things. I've had a lot of brakes, and I like the car that's safe as well. That to me, I mean, if you've got to have Which a roll in defender, defender wasn't. yeah. If you got to have a roll in defender, you want to roll in. That that honestly is one thing to just talk about safety briefly is one thing that scares me slightly. Driving my old defender uh, is that you know I've seen pictures of what happens when you have an accident with defender, and it's not pretty. Um, and if I were to ever have a serious accident in my defender. You know, well, I wouldn't want it to happen. <laughs> but you've got slimmer it's, chances, unless. It, yeah. And also, if you hit someone as well. Yeah. You know the, that metal bumper and just the grill and. Yeah. It's, it's, it's scary what you can do. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not. It's a fear club. It's time. You can't blame it for. No, 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 not at all, not at all. No, but I mean, I'm just saying that it couldn't carry on that. Way. No, I and mean, you can see why as well. I mean, look, people aren't even allowed to smoke anymore. You know, you have to you go to prison for a billion years if you smoke near anything. You know, I mean, so to allow a car that is is pumping out black smoke everywhere and um, 
is environmentally unfriendly from work go, even if it had an efficient engine on it, it's drag coefficient everything would cause it to be yeah. an issue. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, yeah. it, there's a lot of reasons and the handling isn't so hot compared to modern things and it, it's stability for towing even, it's not as good as other things as it is. Yeah. And Land Rover, yeah. you know, I mean, it was, it was it, the Defender was at the top of his game at some point, right? We know that, but then yeah, yeah, absolutely. things prepped up and overtook it. And it I'm glad they did it because it's kept the name alive and it's another model I love having the variety around. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and I and it, I, it was needed because I think with the lineup of, don't get me wrong, Range Rovers, Discoveries, everything, they're all great, but they needed that Defender to fill the gap it was missing. They did. And then it, now it's back and I think it's exactly the way it should be. You were um, talking about the Jimny. Yeah. I've actually got getting hold of a 2019 Jimny next week and I'm putting it against the, I want to try one. I'm putting it against the new nine. well, last of the new 90s, that white one. Yeah, yeah, uh, so 2015. Putting it against that for fun. Oh, sweet. But not just that, the the Jimny. I'm pretty sure, right, you know that Land Rover have a Disco Sport and a Range Rover Sport. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they'll come out with a Fender Sport to go against something like they'll, that. They'll have, yeah, there will be one there. Yeah, there'll they'll be, be variations on it for sure. Yeah. And that Jimny is not very new. It's got a new skin and a yeah, slightly new look. But underneath it, it's kind of like the 500 quid second hand one you can find. You know, Because anything that size and that small, it's got to be like a slightly big quad. It's got to be yeah. good. <laughs> it's got to be good, but you can't really tow it. But then you can't, you can't tow three and a half tons with it and put all that stuff on the roof and, and That's right. And blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a nice little thing, the Jimny thing. It's not ideal. It's, it's, it's a cool little car, but, you know, it's not... If Land Rover had done that, it, I mean, we've, we're repeating ourselves, yeah. but it, it's not evolution. Yeah, if they came out of anything like that, they would have said, and well, that's the same as the other one. Yeah, they would have been damned for it. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't sell. So that's that. Anyway, um, we've been talking forever now. Um, but it's been really, really good to chat and really glad to hear your thoughts. And I'm really, really, really jealous that you've seen the new Defender. And I can't wait to get my hands on one myself uh, and try it out because it will 99% sure be absolutely brilliant. Uh, <laughs> and I can't wait. Um, so thank you very much for thank you. giving me your time. And uh, yeah, that was the other thing. Go and check out your uh, two, hour, two hour and 15 minute. Oh, one. I am getting a Defender as well, sent me. Sorry? I'm getting the new Defender Sentinel as well, so there is that too. <laughs> and my friends ordered one, so when that goes, when the press one goes oh. back, I'm getting the other one to you. Actually, I say that I do know someone who's ordered one, so yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Um, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. But go and check out uh, his two hour and 15 minute long documentary on his channel. I'll put a link down in the description. Well worth watching, whether you're for or against the new Defender. It's really, really good. Uh, and you can really tell how much effort and time and thought you've put into it. It is not just a, a rant, it is a well thought out. Um, well produced film. Thank so, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.